Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China. Today, we are going to share some exciting tech innovations and announcements that happened in China last week. On August 24th, Japan started dumping radioactive water from Fukushima into the Pacific. Experts estimate around 1.5 million tons of contaminated water has accumulated so far. Discharges may continue for 30 to 50 years, affecting the entire Pacific region and beyond. This has raised global concerns about health and environmental impact. The stimulation results revealed just how close the Fukushima contaminated water is to us. Radioactive material would appear off China's coast about 240 days after being discharged. They would then spread down China's southeast shores, reaching the US and Canadian west coast in around three years, with some appearing along the north coast of Australia, covering almost the whole North Pacific. The radioactive materials will then rapidly spread southward along the Americas carried by the equatorial current while also transferring into the Indian Ocean via northern Australian waters. With levels building up over time, eventually concentrations would be higher along North America's shores compared to the most of coastal East Asia. To present a clearer comparison, researchers selected three coastal cities, Misayaki in Japan, Shanghai in China, and San Diego in the United States, and graphed the tritium concentration changes in nearby waters. Notably, although contaminants arrived later in San Diego, the stable concentration levels there eventually exceed those in Misayaki. Around 4,000 days after discharge begins, contaminant concentrations near San Diego are already higher than most of East Asia's coastal regions, roughly three times Misayaki's level and 40 times Shanghai's level. The reason for this phenomenon is that strong ocean currents near Japan carry most contaminants eastward across the Pacific rather than southward along the Asian coastline. Although Japan has claimed to the public that the issue is only regarding tritium, many scientists worldwide share the consensus that the contaminated water contains up to 64 types of radioactive elements, over 70% above safety limits, which are difficult to fully process with current technologies. Back in May, the plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company found that black rockfish have 18,000 becquerels per kilogram of cesium-137, with 180 times over the legal limit. They also confirmed that a total of 44 fish with cesium levels above 100 becquerels per kilogram had been found in the Fukuyama's plant port between May 2022 and May 2023. The effect could be long-term, as we have mentioned previously, this charge may continue for 30 to 50 years. The accumulation of radioactive materials over such a long time is uncertain. China and Russia has suggested an alternative plan for Japan to consider, which is evaporative mission. That refers to the method of evaporating contaminated water with radioactive tritium and releasing it into the air. They argue aerial emission would have less regional impact and monitoring methods are technically mature. However, Japan rejected this proposal mainly based on the higher cost of evaporative missions. The first batch of 7,800 tons of radioactive contaminated water is currently being discharged into the ocean, a process that will continue for 17 days. We will keep following this developing story and in our next episode, we will provide an in-depth analysis on the consequences of Japan's way of disposing the Fukuyama's contaminated water and to what extent it will affect each of us. Chinese scientists have successfully converted carbon dioxide into sugar. Sugar production has always relied on plants, but crop yields face increasing risk from climate change impact like land degradation, ecosystem decline, and extreme weather. Securing sustainable sugar feedstock is becoming a challenge. 
In September 2021, researchers at the Tianjin Institute of Institutional Biotechnology synthesized starch from carbon dioxide in the lab. In less than two years, on August 16, 2023, they successfully converted carbon dioxide into sugars. The team established a modular chemical enzymatic cascade to transform carbon dioxide into hexose, which is a simple sugar with six carbon atoms. Common hexose are glucose and fructose. The team had successfully produced four types of sugars. The full reaction took about 17 hours, reducing sugar production from years to hours compared to traditional crop extraction. The yield was 0.67 grams per litre per hour, over 10 times higher than previous bio-based efforts. Leading author Yang Jianguang said controlling different enzymes enables theoretical synthesis for almost any sugar type. This precision will be key for high-value food, pharmaceutical, and biomaterial production. In future, the team want to further synthesize other types of sugar for applications in food, medicine, and biomanufacturing. Maybe one day, scientists could even turn air into a meal. This past July may go down as one of the hottest months ever recorded, potentially in 120,000 years. As climate change accelerates, extreme weather like hurricanes, typhoons, floods, and droughts are becoming more frequent. Improving weather forecasting accuracy can better safeguard lives and property, especially when typhoons make landing. Study shows reducing the 24-hour typhoon pass prediction error by just 1 km decreases direct economic losses by around 97 million yuan. However, reducing typhoon forecast uncertainty has been a slow process, with global medium rain scale improving only one day per decade. Before ChatGPT exploded, powerful computing, massive datasets, and deep learning were already combined to build sophisticated weather models. For example, NVIDIA's ForecastNet, DeepMind, and Google's GraphCast, Microsoft Climate X. But recently, attention has focused on China's Huawei and its Pangu weather model. The Pangu weather model is a 3D high resolution global forecasting AI system exceeding traditional numerical prediction accuracy. Two months before appearing in Nature, it accurately forecasted Typhoon Huawei's change in its past five days out. By training deep neural networks on 43 years of global data, Pangu surpassed legacy method in both precision and speed. Previously, stimulating a typhoon's 10-day pass took 5 hours across 3,000 servers. Now, with the pre-trained Pangu and AI inference, more accurate forecasts take just 10 seconds in one server and GPU. With immense computing power, Pangu can predict the hourly or the week's global weather in seconds, and it is 10,000 times faster than before. The key innovation is its 3D Earth-specific transformer tailored to graphic coordinates for processing complex 3D weather data. Unlike 2D models confined to pressure levels, Pangu's 3D architecture better captures ocean, atmosphere, and land interactions. Pangu has proven itself forecasting extremes like February storm, Eunice, and UK's first 40 degrees Celsius temperatures. It has the lowest error compared to the European and American agencies for predicting typhoons. Pangu is now on the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting website, offering free 10 day global forecasts. Recent tests showed Pangu outperformed the center's model on accuracy metrics and extreme weather prediction. As the next typhoon approaches, it is hoped that more people can say we are prepared. This tree is the tallest tree newly found in Asia, the Tibetan Cypress 1, at 101.2 meters tall. This photo is taken by drones and it vertically combines hundreds of shots together. And it's the second tallest tree in the world. After the 115.9 meter Hyborion Coast Redwood discovered in California in 2006, Tibetan Cypress 2, found alongside it, reached 99.5 meters. The Chinese team discovered this groove in Tibet 
with the world's highest altitude. Over 260 trees exceeded 80 meters, with 25 surpassing 90 meters in this biodiversity hotspot. Judging by diameter and rings, researchers estimate Tibetan Cypress 1 is about 1,450 years old. Tibetan Cypress 2 is around 1,400 years old. So how do they get so big and can they keep growing taller? Botanists define giant trees as over 90 meters. Researchers said the tallest tree live exclusively in wet, humid, temperature climates. The groove where these giant trees were found is a cloud forest with annual rainfall of 1,500 to 2,000 millimeters. And this is important because for trees above 60 meters high, it becomes increasingly difficult for them to obtain water that is transported upwards from the root. So it relies on the moisture that branches and leaves directly obtain from fog and rain. While not skyscraper heights, these giants are biological marvels and living fossils. There are many ecosystems. Tibetan Cypress 1 and 2 host 46 epiphyte species, which are plants that grow on other plants. Birds and numerous insects also spotted by the team. And that is all for today's Threshold. As always, please let us know if you like this news section on science and technology in China, and we will do more in the future.